So Tom Perez, the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, proved once again how much of an establishment corporate tool he is. <laughs> Before I go into rage mode over this clearly corrupt decision by the Democratic Party, let me give you some context. Governor of Washington State Jay Inslee is one of the 20 plus people running in the Democratic primary for the 2020 presidential nomination. His platform is centered around climate change. Even though I think it's great that there's a presidential campaign whose main focus is addressing climate change, I'll be real, he has like 0% chance of winning, but that's besides the point. In light of this stunning fact that the media has not asked a single question about climate change in any of the presidential primary debates in the last 15 years, Jay Inslee put in a request that the DNC dedicate a full debate to the issue of climate change. Tom Perez responded on Twitter by saying, quote, I know and agree that climate change is an existential threat. I saw it firsthand today when I visited Hurricane Michael survivors in Florida. I have personally told media partners seeking to host a 2020 primary debate how important it is for climate change to be debated during each and every debate. Frankly, it is my opinion that it is an issue that should have been more prominent in the 2016 cycle. The DNC will not be holding entire debates on a single issue area. We want to make sure voters have the ability to hear from candidates on all of the issues. That is a kind of condescending doublespeak that has made me come to loathe the corporate Democrats. I'll get to how insidious that statement actually is in a minute. But first, look at that profound bait and switch that Tom Perez tried to pull on us. He goes from admitting that climate change is an existential threat that threatens all life on the planet to, man, I wish the corporate media would have talked about this more back in 2016, and I sure hope they talk about it more during this primary season. Then he finishes by saying, I'm still not going to allow an entire debate dedicated to climate change, even though it's within my power as the head of the Democratic Party. He goes from, yeah, bro, I totally agree climate change is going to kill all of us and destroy the planet, to, but we're not actually going to talk about it, though, with absolutely no transition or even attempt to rationalize how his conclusion makes any logical sense, given what he said directly before it. And as you'd expect, lefty Twitter wasn't having any of this. One of the best memes I saw in response to the statement from Tom Perez was somebody who said, the official position of the Democratic Party on the issue of climate change in 2020 is, it's going to kill us, but shut the fuck up about it. I know that's meant to be a parody, but that is literally what the Democratic Party's official position is on climate change at this point. Let's go back to a point I made at the beginning of this. The Democratic Party in all of the primary debates that they've had in the last 15, 16 years have not asked a single question about the issue of climate change. Not even once. And that is a testament to how fucked up our media is in the United States. Because you know what? The reason why they don't do this is because a lot of those mainstream media outlets, MSNBC, CNN, ABC, they all take a shitload of money from the fossil fuel industry. That's why you see Exxon and and Chevron and and BP commercials on their networks all the time. This is this is a joke that I, I can't remember where I heard it from the first time, but it's so true. It's not like Exxon has to remind people to fill up their gas tank. So why do you see their commercials on CNN or on ABC? The reason for that is they are buying the silence of those networks on the issue of climate change. Why would CNN or ABC or MSNBC talk about climate change, which will inevitably put these fossil fuel companies in a negative light if they are taking hundreds of millions of dollars in advertisement money to run the, their ads on their network? They're not going to do it because they have a financial conflict of interest and they have a financial incentive not to do it. So that's how fucked up our media system is. But knowing the fact that we haven't had a single question about such an important issue in the last 15 years, and knowing how dangerous the climate crisis is, if Tom Perez as the new DNC chair was going to make clear that 
they are turning over a new leaf and that they are actually going to take climate change seriously, would it not be appropriate to dedicate an entire debate to the issue? And Tom Perez is trying to make the argument that there are so many issues that people want to hear from the Democratic candidates on, so I can't possibly in good faith have them debate just one issue for two hours. I think that's stupid, and I think if Tom Perez actually believes that, then he just does not understand how serious the issue of climate change is. The issue is so nuanced, and there are so many different levels and directions that you can go in with this discussion, that it's almost impossible to actually have a thorough discussion on, on climate change unless you really devote an hour to, to doing so. So here are, here are a few examples of what I mean by how nuanced and, and complex this issue is. What do these different candidates plan on doing about sea level rise specifically? How do they plan on dealing with the eventual unprecedented immigration crisis that is going to come from extreme weather events like the Middle East becoming so hot that it's uninhabitable within the next couple of decades? We all know that record high temperatures across the country are causing severe droughts that lead to unprecedented wildfires and water shortages in certain parts of the country. What is your plan to address that? Something that is directly related to climate change and man-made pollution that gets even less coverage than climate change in the mainstream media is the fact that we are in the sixth mass extinction event Millions of species around the world are going extinct directly because of human action. Wouldn't it be nice to hear if all these different candidates have anything to say about that or plan to address it? So I think an entire Democratic primary debate devoted to climate change would be monumental. Because then it would be extremely clear exactly where each of these candidates stand on the issue of climate change. Because right now, for the last two decades, the bar for what is acceptable for a Democratic presidential nominee or just a Democratic politician on the issue of climate change has been insultingly low. All you have to say to be considered a good politician on the issue of climate change is, I acknowledge climate change is happening and I think we should do something to address it. What do you fucking do? Literally every political party in every country around the world acknowledges that climate change is real. And that is what is considered a good politician on the issue of climate change in the U.S. So that should give you an idea of how far off the fucking spectrum U.S. politics has gotten in the last few decades. That is sh- That is so shallow and overall useless to the conversation because because we understand that climate change is real we understand that we need to do something about it but what is your specific plan to address it what we get when we accept that surface level shallow position on climate change is politicians like hillary clinton and barack obama and debbie washington schultz and nancy pelosi and chuck schumer even though they're in the democratic party and they acknowledge climate change is real None of them, in the decades that they've been in office, have proposed any serious plan to address climate change. In fact, they've all gone in the wrong direction and they've exacerbated the issue. Barack Obama, his entire presidency, repeats the same old tired line, climate change is real and we should do something to fix it. But what has he but what did he do in his whole 8 years of being president? What were his policies to radically address climate change? Barack Obama allowed offshore drilling and he allowed drilling up at the Arctic. The Obama administration approved oil pipelines across the country. Energy Transfer Partners was illegally building an oil pipeline under the Mississippi River that threatened to contaminate the drinking water of over two million people. Right through Native American territory, Obama didn't say a damn word about it. And the North Dakota Access Pipeline situation was even beyond just climate change. It was a human rights issue because protesters were being brutalized and arrested without cause en masse, and the same with journalists that were reporting what was actually happening, like Amy Goodman from Democracy Now. 
the UN had to send human rights observers because they had mass reports of human rights abuses at Standing Rock. Obama did nothing. Obama would have been well within his rights to send in the FBI and the Department of Justice to arrest and prosecute the executives at Energy Transfer Partners because they had no right to build that pipeline. They did not do an environmental impact study to see what the effects of that pipeline would be on the environment, which is mandated by federal law. And on top of that, the pipeline went straight through Native American territory, like I already mentioned, which is protected by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. So on federally protected land, they illegally built this pipeline. If Barack Obama was in any way serious about climate change or even at the very least protecting human rights and journalists, he would have stepped in and arrested the executives at Energy Transfer Partners. He would have investigated the police department in North Dakota that was acting as private security for energy transfer partners and arresting journalists and brutalizing protesters. But he didn't. Instead, but instead, he let that pipeline, just like many other pipelines in the U.S., be built, producing more oil in the U.S. than any other administration in U.S. history. A democratic administration, while at the same time, we're getting all of these cataclysmic reports from climate scientists saying that if we don't turn this around, if we don't radically address climate change within the next decade or two, if we don't turn this around and radically address climate change very soon, the window of opportunity we have to fix this problem is going to close. And the most apocalyptic, cataclysmic prediction of climate change that scientists have been warning about for decades will become a reality on this planet within the next hundred years. Even with those reports coming out, he still didn't do a damn thing about it. And his whole legacy on climate change, the only policies that he actually supported to do anything in his whole eight years of being in the White House was the Paris Climate Accords, which all climate activists and environmental activists and climate scientists, they agree that the Paris Climate Accord was so loose and so lax when it comes to climate policy that it doesn't even go 10% of what we need to to get to 0% carbon emissions and to radically, drastically reduce pollution to mitigate the worst effects of climate change. But Barack Obama was going around and acting like, oh, yeah, I signed the Paris Climate Accords, which was weak sauce climate change regulations and a few executive orders on the fossil fuel industry that didn't really go as far as they needed to go. And as soon as Donald Trump came in office, he just repealed them because they were just executive orders. So all you t all it takes is another executive order from the next president and they're fucking gone. So they're all non-existent at this point. Barack Obama's climate change legacy is non-existent at this point because anything that he he put out was immediately taken away from by the Trump administration. Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State, previously she taken money from the fossil fuel industry, her and Bill Clinton, and she was one of the and she acted as one of the biggest salespeople pushing fracking around the world. She went to dozens of countries and strong-armed their governments with the full force of the U.S. government behind her into not only adopting this dangerous pra practice of fracking, but they also had to allow U.S. oil companies who bribed Hillary Clinton with campaign contributions and donations to the Clinton Foundation. Those, those companies that bribed them, those were the only ones who would be allowed to fulfill the fracking contracts. So just rank corruption rent corruption, fuck the climate, I'm getting paid by these by this industry, therefore I'm going to do favors for this industry. And that was our nominee in 2016. I believe it was 2017, 2018, the DNC actually had a vote to stop taking donations from the fossil fuel industry because people in the DNC acknowledged, like I just clearly laid out, that money was influencing the party's policy positions on climate change in a negative direction. What did Tom Perez do as the head of the DNC? 
He unilaterally reversed that decision so that the Democratic Party can continue to take fossil fuel money, which was clearly influencing the pol- the party's policies on the issue. So that it was in a more corporate, more fossil fuel industry favored direction. As a quick side point that is important, if you recall, right after the 2016 election, there was a race for who would be the chair of the DNC. And for the majority of the race, the only person to throw their hat in the ring was Keith Ellison, who was representing the Bernie Sanders progressive wing of the party, that same wing of the party that had just been proven correct after Hillary Clinton lost the general election to Donald Trump. And also the DNC leaks proved that the DNC rigged the primary against Bernie Sanders. So it would be only right for a Bernie Sanders supporter to come in as the next head of the DNC to clean house and to make sure that that shit didn't happen again. So Keith Ellison was about to walk away with the position as DNC, as DNC chair, but the establishment wasn't having it. So as many different outlets and different, many different sources in independent media reported at the time, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and their allies threw Tom Perez into the race and pulled all kinds of strings behind the scenes so that their guy, the guy that they can trust to make corrupt decisions and to side with the donors of the Democratic Party would end up being the chair of the DNC. And here we are today, Tom Perez being as corrupt as ever and doing the job that he was installed to do which is to side with corporations, which is to side with industry and the big donors of the Democratic Party against progressives and the actual will of the voters. So I go through all of this to explain to you that the Democratic Party is terrible on the issue of climate change. If you listen to their rhetoric, they pretend like they take this issue seriously. They pretend like they actually want to do something about it. But if you look at their policies, if you look at where they're getting their money from, it tells the exact opposite story. And this gets back to the insidious nature about this whole thing that encapsulates the Democratic Party's official position on the issue of climate change. They acknowledge what the scientists have been saying, that climate change is real and that it's a threat to life on the planet. And if we don't address it, that there will be, cataclysm- that there will be cataclysmic consequences for it. But the establishment, the leadership of the party will turn around and at every step they will undermine progressives and leftists who are actually proposing real policy solutions to address the climate crisis just as much as the Republicans do. It's because in reality, they don't actually give a shit about climate change. Just like the Republicans, the leadership of the Democratic Party, the corporate Democrats are in bed with the fossil fuel industry and the large Wall Street banks that invest in them. If you acknowledge that the Republicans have been bought off by the fossil fuel industry, why doesn't that same logic apply to the Democrats? They also take millions of dollars from the very same people who are paying the Republicans to deny climate change. And like I mentioned earlier, this decision from Tom Perez is just rank corruption. The reason why he doesn't want to have a climate change debate isn't that he... Be- isn't because he thinks that there are so many different issues for the Democrats to be talking about. It's because he knows if you really get into the issue, if we really start pressing Democratic candidates on what are their specific positions beyond climate change is real and we should do something about it, what are your specific thoughts and plans on the issue, it's a lose-lose situation for the corporate Democrats and their donors. If that conversation is televised for the world to see, the Democratic Party is going to be exposed. Because this is because this is exactly what's going to end up happening. You'll have real progressives like Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard actually have substantive, nuanced, thought out, research, detailed policy plans to deal with the to deal with the climate crisis. And then the corporate Democrats wouldn't have much to say other than climate change is real and we should do something about it. That doesn't fill up two hours worth of discussion. They'll look clueless and uninformed on the issue 
which is something that I don't think most Americans would tolerate because if you look at any poll, the overwhelming majority of Americans want real, substantive, radical policies to address climate change. Or you can have, like I said, Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard put out their nuanced policy proposals, and the corporate Democrats, some of them, maybe like someone like Kamala Harris, would then be forced, would then be forced to, like she's already done before on different issues, which is try to mimic and co-opt the progressive message, and then she's going to have to put out substantive, detailed policies to address the crisis. And then once they do that, the voters and progressives would hold them to those very same policies that they said that they supported on that debate stage. And the donors of the Democratic Party, the fossil fuel industry and the big banks, they will not like that. And if they try to walk it back or water down their proposals, again, the voters will see through them, they will see them as liars, and they will know that they're frauds. Which is why, if you notice, all these corporate Democrats, the people who've been in Democratic leadership that I've mentioned before, like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and Tom Perez, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, for as long as they've been in politics, they have never put out an actual detailed step-by-step plan to address climate change for those very reasons. Either they'll be stuck having to enforce those policies, which is the exact opposite of what their donors want, and we all know the Democratic Party does not go against the wishes of their donors, or they'll have to flip-flop and backpedal away from those very clear positions that they put out, and it will make them look like frauds and liars. So the vague, generalized politicians speak that they give on this issue of climate change is strategic because they aren't giving away too much so that they can actually be held to those specific policies. All they're saying is, I know that it's real and we should do something about it, but they never, they will never specify what that something is. So I 100% support an entire debate dedicated to the issue of climate change because we need to have these politicians on the record. There have been multiple reports now from climate scientists that confirm we have a 10-year window to address a climate crisis or within the next 100 years, the most cataclysmic predictions of climate change will become a reality on this planet. So whoever the next Democratic nominee is, whoever the next president is, we can't afford to have someone who's going to bullshit us like Barack Obama did or like Hillary Clinton did because now is do or die that the next administration that comes in if they don't radically reduce carbon emissions to zero within the next 10 years we're done so we're fucked all the other issues then become a lot less important $15 minimum wage Medicare for all ending the wars if the next president of the United States does not drastically address the climate crisis, we, we will be looking at the extinction of the human race